I think the coast is clear. Sometimes the most secret identities are hidden in plain sight. Clark Joseph Kent. Yoruba Benai Ephraim, son of Joseph. Let's get it. What's up, BC Dynasty? This is your boy, the man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. JB Zion. Y'all show me some love. Go ahead and like that video up, comment, share, subscribe, do everything you have to do to join the movement. Peace and blessings. Shalom to all my Israelite brothers and sisters. Shalom to my Gentile viewers, my Gentile brothers and sisters. Just welcome back to the channel. I want to greet you all with the love of the Most High Yah. And I got to tell you guys, we got another banger. All praises be to the Most High Yah. Yoruba, Benai Ephraim of the tribe of Joseph, of the son of Jacob, even Israel, i.e. your favorite dreaded Israelite. I'm back with another banger, y'all. So, this is the finale. This is the oh. ultimate conclusion. Ending with Paul's gospel. This is where we wrap up our discourse on the historical gospel. Now that we know who the people are. Now that we know the political climate. We know what was going on during Yeshua's time. We know the Edomites, the sellout coons, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees wasn't even Israel. Y'all, now that we know all that history. Now that we know what Yeshua was sent to do. He was sent to regather the 12 tribes of Israel and establish the long awaited for kingdom of the living God, his ways, his laws, his attributes and form of government, right? Using his people, the children of Israel, as the light unto all nations. We know that this didn't change. This didn't change with the 12 apostles. This didn't change with Peter because in Peter's opening address, he says to the scattered tribes abroad, even James, the brother of Yeshua says his letter is to the scattered 12 tribes. Now we know that the gospel was a black nationalist revolution of the Israelites, not just the Jews that lived in Judea, oh no, but the scattered Israelites that were in the four corners of the earth per Deuteronomy 28, the curses thereof. And now y'all, this is where things finna get real. Paul's gospel. Well, Paul said, you know, the law done away with, you know, Paul, neither Jew nor Gentile, neither Jew nor Greek. We have to understand, family, Paul was a smart man. I repeat, Paul was a lawyer. He was a smart man. He was like Josephus. When Josephus wrote in book two, chapter eight, that there were three philosophical groups, he says that two of which were not Jews by birth. Now you see how politically and how, how aware that Josephus was of who was reading his works? You got to know that when you're dealing with Paul. The scripture says that Paul writes some things that are hard to be understood. He was a lawyer, but his goal did not change. He was sent to the diaspora because as we're gonna open up with, Paul himself was a Gentile. What, JB? Put it on the screen, me brother. Now, Paul tells this Roman soldier, he says, you purchased your, free, your freedom, but I myself was born free. Paul is letting them know that he was a Roman born citizen and that's how he acquired his citizenship. Paul himself was a Roman, y'all. Paul himself was a Gentile, but he knew his ethnicity down to the tribe of Benjamin. That is, that is a Israelite understand. So when you look at Paul's writings, you need to know the who, what, when, where, and why. They teach this to us in, in, in school, right? You have to know the author's bias. You have to know where the author is coming from. Paul had probably had Israelite brothers and, and friends that, that, that were Hellenist, right? They were Hellenized. They was eating pork chop and sausage egg and cheese biscuits. This is the audience that Paul was dealing with, right? But his heart was that Israel would be saved. I know a lot of y'all don't believe me, so we finna go ahead and jump into it, y'all. Let's start with the infamous Cornelius, right? So now Cornelius is where we see the friction between Peter and, and uh, Paul. A lot of us think that, okay, well, Paul, he went to the Gentiles and Peter went to, to the Israelites, but we don't understand what was really going on. Peter knew that gospel, the gospel mission was to the scattered Israelites. He knew this, right? 
the contention was Peter was a human being just like the rest of us, y'all. He was he had he had issues, right? He had biases. He didn't want to sit down with other Gentiles. Now understand, these are Israelites. So this is his own family, but if they didn't keep Torah, the Jews didn't deal with them. And this is where Paul had contention. He said, yo, bro, you trying to get these Israelites to be like you and be a Jew and turn back to the heritage of their forefathers. But then you want to discriminate against them and act like you better than them. This is the same thing going on today, you guys. And you guys, I got to let you guys understand. Even though I subscribe to the law, statutes, and commandments, and that's turning back to our heritage, there has to be a certain amount of grace when we're dealing with our brothers and sisters that do not know that we are Israel. Understand. I have family, I have friends that, you know, they have that Christmas tree up and the Easter baskets and them, them pork ribs and all these things, right? But we have to we have to temper our natural zeal for the most high and our love for our heritage when we're dealing with our family and friends because we're in captivity. We are in the nations of our captivity. And this is the family dysfunction that was going on with our forefathers, even in the Bible times. Peter and, and Paul were bumping heads, and we see this collide in Acts chapter 15. Let's turn to it, you guys. So in Acts chapter 15, Paul and Barnabas are going before the council of the twelve, Peter, James, and John. And they're saying, well, 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 you Paul and Barnabas, y'all are telling people that they need to be circum that they don't need to be circumcised. And then Paul and them are saying, well, you're saying that they gotta be circumcised, and you have this big old contention, right? Whether or not to tell these Gentiles whether they need to keep the law of Moses. Now watch what James says in Acts chapter 15. James says that this is a fulfillment of a prophecy that the Lord would raise up the tabernacle of King David. Now, what is he talking about? James is talking about the prophecy that this David Messiah would restore the 12 tribes together. So James is basically saying, let's don't put no hardship on these folks. Let's catch the fish before we try to scale them and skin them. Understand? So basically, you have these zealot Judaistic Israelites that are keeping Torah and Shabbat. And Paul is having to tell them, Christ died for Jew and Gentile. Christ died for Jew and the Greek. Now, why does he say Jew and Greek? Now, when you look at the context, the Greeks, Greek-speaking Jews or Hellenist is who he's referring to. Well, 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 JB, how you know that? How you know that Paul's letters went to European and other folks that weren't Israelite? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's go ahead and get it, guys. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it reads, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Whoa, wait a second, JB. If Paul is talking to Gentiles that are not Israelites, why does he say, I would not have you ignorant that all of our fathers passed under the cloud and passed through the sea? He's talking to Hellenized Israelites. I know a lot of y'all ain't going to, you ain't going to, you ain't going to. Let's let the scriptures talk. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's go ahead and get this, y'all. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, it says, you know that you were Gentiles. And that you were carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. What is Paul saying? Paul is saying, how can somebody nationality-wise, in the times past, I was a white person, but now I'm a black person. What is he talking about? He's Now watch this, y'all. Y'all got to get this. He's saying, in times past, you were made Gentiles when you were carried away in captivity to serve these dumb idols. Come on now, y'all. Paul is saying that these Israelites were made Hellenist. I know, I, I, know, I, know, I know it's rough. I know it's a tough pill to swallow. Now we're going to go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. We got to end this, y'all. Now in the same book of Galatians, this is where the whole contention of neither Jew nor Gentile arises. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4, beginning at verse 5, and it reads... To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Wait a second, y'all. Let's go back to Romans chapter 9, verse 3, because this piggybacks it. 
And Romans recall that in chapter 9, verse 3, it reads, For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my people, my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites. To them pertains the adoption. Whoa, wait a second now. To them pertains the, the adoption. Wait, wait, wait. Now let's go back to Galatians chapter 4 verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive adoption of sons. Wait a second. If the adoption, if the adoption pertains to Israel, right? And it says to redeem them that were under the law. This is in the book of Galatians. Paul is talking to Israelites that had not adopted the Judeo way of life. It's just like African Americans today. It's just like me making this video. A lot of y'all are African Americans so-called, but you're Israelites. You're Americans, but you're Israelites. And the way you live is like any other American. Sausage, egg, and cheese, biscuits, uh, Christmas trees. This is what was going on during the time of Paul. And y'all, it's so many precepts, you guys. But this is, I might make this a two-part series, but I just want to get the ball rolling and let you guys know that Paul's mission was coming from personal experience. Paul himself. See, even in Galatians, he says that we might receive adoption. Paul takes it personal. Paul's like, yo, Peter, you trying to discriminate against, against Gentiles, folks that live in other countries? Yo, I'm a Roman, right? And I'm going to fight for these other people. And you think that you want people to be like you and, and try to get other Israelites to, to keep Torah. But understand, Christ died for all of us. And you ain't better than us because his blood atones for all the 12 tribes of Israel. So you guys, I'm going to do a part two on this thing, y'all. But understand, Paul knew who he was sent to. Paul was sent to the lost sheep just like Peter and them were supposed to be sent. Just like Christ's original mission was. So with that, y'all, peace, love, blessings, and black power to the chosen people of the Most High, y'all. I love you all with the love of the Most High. And with that, I say shalom. All praises.